pretty early. Might as well, huh? Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here, tuning in. Um, do we have any outstanding questions or comments from the prior session or not? No? Okay. YouTube questions from yesterday. Okay. All right. Go ahead, YouTube. She asks, is it possible for one to certify fourth stage arhat without any spiritual penetration? Is it possible to certify the fourth stage arhat without spiritual penetrations? Uh, I may know this person. Are you a fourth stage arhat? Yes. The spiritual penetrations come after. What happened is the fourth day jahat is a state of samadhi that you will enter. And when you enter it, you will recognize it. And it will be clear to you, unlike the prior levels of ahat just below, you're still not sure, and you may be misguided, but a four-stage ahat usually, typically, recognizes it, that uh, it, it is something very special, and, uh, and uh, so, uh, so you recognize when you enter that samadhi. So it's a samadhi of four-stage ahat. That samadhi enables you to uh, experience certain things that you couldn't experience before. Uh, but uh, spiritual penetrations are something else. Spiritual penetrations are the things that will develop naturally later. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yes, four stage ahats, uh, many of them uh, don't develop spiritual penetrations because that's not the path. The path is not to use spiritual penetrations, but uh, um, many ahats uh, eventually develop spiritual penetrations, will, which you will enable them to do a lot more. All right, anything else? So, uh, in Buddhism, spiritual penetrations are unlike uh, the non-Buddhists, I mean, at least the uh, Buddhists in the know, uh, are not terribly attached to spiritual penetrations. It's never a goal. It's something that happens naturally. Uh, you go through this training process, you go through your practice, your spiritual practices. Uh, so it will happen naturally and you learn. And you learn, uh, eventually you understand why it happens. and. Uh, 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 the people who, who are below tend to be uh, enamored with it because it's something cool, something special. Uh, but uh, it's never a goal for the high levels because uh, uh, in my humble opinion, spiritual penetrations uh, can be a double-edged sword. Because once you have it, because I noticed, for example, a lot of uh, monks and nuns uh, 
that uh, have been practicing for a long time the proper way. Uh, they develop spiritual penetrations and they uh, become attached to those uh, things. For example, they're able to see uh, uh, things in the past, they're able to see, uh, live it into the future, and that's what they do. If everything, any time that happens, anything that happens, they would look and try to, to try to understand. And uh, because of that, uh, to us, purists is, is a waste of time. You know, to us, purists, we only want spiritual penetration because we, uh, it's helpful for our work, never out of curiosity. These uh, people, they, very, they tend to be curious because they're impressed by you. That's why they're curious. They want to see where are you from, uh, what did you do, what did you do, where are you going, that kind of thing. And uh, so they, they, they have these habit energies that uh, make, them, make them curious. Uh, whereas the, the purists, uh, they uh, are not interested in looking at you, looking at us looking at uh, or trying to understand the visions or someone else's visions, uh, it's never that important, okay? Uh, and and um, so you become less, uh, less attached to those uh, things uh, because uh, spirit, spiritual penetrations uh, have uh, limitations as well. Uh, uh, at low level, for example, uh, the arhats can see a certain, uh, a certain range of vision, of understanding, but beyond that, beyond that timeline, they can't. Okay, so, uh, so in the end, sp spiritual penetrations, if, you're, if they're sought after, if they're relied upon, they tend to, be, tend to handicap you. Okay, uh, they're useful to do the real work, but they should not be uh, uh, the obstruction to your spiritual progress. Okay, uh, so that's what happens to non-Buddhists, for example, especially the Hindus and so forth. They are in uh, uh, a situations where they need to sustain themselves and, uh, and uh, their followers and they want to build this, build that, and, and uh, do this and do that, and therefore they need financial resources and support. And because of that, and they need to develop these uh, so-called skills, special skills to impress you, to get you to support them. Uh, uh, so, initially, uh, in the Hinayana Sutras, the Buddha forbid his disciples to exhibit spiritual penetrations. For example, at one time, uh, Gautama Buddha, and this is from the a Hinayana Sutta that I read a long, long time ago. Uh, yeah, for some reason, I don't know why I found it, but I, I read it a long, long time ago. And the Gautama Buddha was, um, uh, uh, as he was known in India back then, was, uh, and his uh, disciples were uh, approach a river. Okay, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a large river, a rather big river, so there's no crossings, no bridge, and nothing. So he was the, so the Gautama Buddha was standing there uh, waiting. He needs to go to cross the river. So along came a, uh, uh, a, uh, a s externalist who looked at Gautama and said, just watch, this river cannot stop me. So he walked on, on the water across the river. You say, just watch, you, Gautama, watch me. 
so you walk across the river. So you basically, you basically walk on water. Isn't that cool? I'm sure Sean would like to do that, and you make a fortune. <laughs> and he walked over to the river and looked back, and Gautama Buddha and said, what do you think? And Gautama says, Gautama Buddha says, very good, impressive. But you know, for a nickel, I can do exactly the same thing like you, crossing a river by paying this, uh, this uh, boat, <laughs> the boatman. <laughs> so Gautama Buddha basically said that uh, it's impressive, but it's not very good use of your skills. <laughs> And so the Buddha then uh, further elaborated and says, uh, I forbid my big shoes to exhibit spiritual penetrations except for a few. Okay? Uh, only a few things that my monks are allowed to exhibit, to, 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 to manifest. Like an ahat, they could uh, ride on the clouds, and they can emit uh, water from the upper part of the body and, and uh, fire from uh, the lower part of the body and so forth. Uh, that's allowed. Uh, uh, but, uh, but the rest of the spiritual penetration, they're not allowed to manifest them. Okay, that was fine until, until I later read that Master Xinhua was showing off every single twist and turn in his journey. <laughs> He was healing people. He was, you know, manifesting this, manifesting that, and so forth. Uh, you see, um, because uh, uh, so my master did a lot of things that were uh, unusual. Uh, that shows you the depth of Buddhism. The Buddha, Gautama Buddha, forbid his disciples in the Hinayana world. In the Ahat's world, you, when you have the spiritual penetrations, it's very easy for you to get stuck with these. And that's why you should not exhibit them, because if you can't exhibit them, then they're useless to you. Hmm? They can obstruct you in your spiritual progress. But Masha Shenhua is an entirely different case. He can not be obstructed. He's beyond being obstructed by spiritual penetration. He uses skills in his work. Imagine this, uh, shall we say, short Chinese monk in a wide, you know, Caucasian world. Okay. Uh, and uh, coming here with no support, no references, no certification, right? Uh, and his own man his own person. Uh, and so he decided to use spiritual penetration to do his work, to speed it up. Even so, after 50 years, uh, he uh, still had, uh, he only had, uh, could do so much. Let me put it that way. Uh, and that's from uh, exhibiting his spiritual penetrations left and right. Okay. okay. And... Uh, and that's how he managed to do a lot of things. A lot of got a lot of support. A lot of, a lot of got a lot of believers. Okay, uh, so that's also Buddhism. You cannot say that Gautama Buddha says uh, you cannot show off. That means it applies to everyone. The instructions are for the low level people who who uh, would be easily uh, be sidetracked by those skills, but for Master Shenhua is not the case. Hmm. However, there's a price to pay as well. When he did that, he did that at the price of his own spiritual progress as well. Because every time you manifest those things, you pay a, a, a very, very high price. Okay? Uh, it's just uh, a simple analogy is, let's say you're able to see something uh, it comes, it's just like going to see a movie, go to a movie, movie theater. You, you want to see a movie, you have to pay. You want to you see something, it comes from your blessings. Okay? 
So unless you have good causes to do that, uh, don't waste your blessings because you're not a Buddha yet. Okay? So in my master's case, he did that because he's out of wisdom. Uh, because uh, I can't think of anyone who's uh, he's impressed by anyone, as far as I know. But uh, uh, the, his disciples who have spiritual penetration, some spiritual penetrations, uh, still are easily impressed by worldly things, by other people. If you're like that, uh, you have a long way to go. Don't, uh, don't seek spiritual penetrations. Seek to open your wisdom first, because it's much faster, much more efficient to open your wisdom first, and then uh, spiritual penetration later in order to do your work, not as a goal. Questions or comments? I know I'm touching a soft nerve here. As soon as I touch uh, Mo Yin's uh, masters and her colleagues, uh, from the other side, she is like, uh, uh, I have something to say. Uh, <laughs> yes, black. Mo hoặc mà thầy giống bây giờ tu a la hán hoặc là mình đi niệm phật gì đi giảng sanh hai cái cái nào hơn thầy cái nào cho mình có kết quả hơn. Why? Yellow, something. Um, being an arahant versus um, cultivating and go to the pure land, which one is better? It's a good question. I don't know how to answer it. I'm not sure uh, how to, what's appropriate way to answer it to you because there's so many people here uh, have from different uh, interests and backgrounds and persuasions. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, in general, uh, you, uh, I feel you're better off going to the Pure Land. That should be your n number one overriding goal. Okay, uh, meaning that it's the probably the best place possible, uh, in my humble opinion. Uh, Gautama Buddha uh, um, came to our world to teach us. Uh, he, uh, he first had to teach low-level people, uh, lower roots people, and therefore uh, these uh, the lower roots meaning they they only believe when they see things. So he had to teach them to become an arhat. So it's just more concrete things for them to go for. Uh, and that's fine. Uh, and that's why when these people get there, uh, many of them, many of them become enamored with it and say, oh, I finally, finally got control of my life and uh, do as I please. I, uh, I have nothing else to learn, as they tell themselves. Uh, they have nothing else to learn in that subset of Agama teachings. But there's still a lot more that Gautama Buddha didn't have a chance to teach them yet. Okay? Uh, so, so for low-level people, uh, they would uh, they need to something concrete where they practice and their samadhi increases, so it helps them, provide assurance for them. But if you have the blessings, uh, then you don't need you don't need so much to see things. Uh, in Buddhism, in Mahayana, uh, the main thing in your Mahayana practice is what? Hmm? What is the most important factor 
in your Mahayana practice. Hinayana is understanding. It has to make sense to you, right? Because in Hinayana teachings, everything is very logical. You can, in the Buddha says, if, if you understand, you agree with it, it makes sense to you, by all means, go for it. If it doesn't make sense to you, stop, back out, okay? It's designed to help initially the people who have been corrupted by non-Buddhist teachings, by superstitious beliefs. So the Buddha first had to undo that. They said, listen, uh, uh, you don't know me, I don't know you, so in order for you, in order for you to uh, become better, okay, uh, you have to stop this nonsense, this, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, superstitious uh, beliefs, all these uh, improper uh, seekings, okay? So that worked for the lower level people, as I said. And works, that's fine. That's eventually with that, with that intellect, with that using your discriminating mind, there's a way to teach you how to reach fourth stage arhats. It's possible. Okay? Uh, but then he started teaching more. What I'm teaching you, what my master is teaching you, is not that. We're not teaching that at all. We're not interested in doing that. Yes, if you come and you ask me things, we can give you plenty of reasons. But uh, uh, that's only initial initial point for you to appease your 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 uh, your ret your intellect. Okay. Yeah. But uh, but the real the real teaching in Mahayana is what? Yes, green. To master to get more blessings to help help you in your progress, your spiritual progress. Okay. Uh, all right, you get blessings. So do the Hinayana. They do have a lot of blessings themselves. Yes. Uh, Stars in the sky, fireworks. <laughs> Hello, Master. Uh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, this is a, this is a separate question. Do you want to take it now or later? Uh, we take it now, I guess. <laughs> uh, so yesterday you mentioned that, uh, like. Uh, uh, when someone asks a question, you mentioned the uh, Amitabha Buddha sends a lot of people back to here right after uh, they get pure land. So I wonder if this is before the uh, is the great transference uh, text said that you go to pure land, you're in the lotus flower, and the flower opens, you attend the uh, 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 sorry, I forgot how to say that in English. The patients without uh, non production. Uh, you attend that level. Um, so, is this, uh, so, so does that happen first or, or they get sent back to the here before that? It depends. Depends on you. Okay. It depends. Again, uh, sometimes in Pure Land, we don't want to tell you too much because it, you, when you tell you too much, then uh, we can't catch the phony teachers because <laughs> they also know everything already. <laughs> in Chan school, they can't fake it. Someone asked me recently, he says, how do you know that you meet, you meet, uh, uh, I still have to answer that question, okay, later, uh, the, uh, uh, from the other side of the tracks. Um, uh, someone asked me recently, he says, uh, uh, if you meet with the Buddha or Bodhisattva, 
How do you know it's not the demon? You see the Buddha appearing. And the Bodhisattva appearing. You see Guan Yin appearing. How do you know it's not the demon playing, playing tricks on you? And the answer is, uh, if you see, if, if uh, a demon manifests itself as the Buddha, Bodhisattva, okay, uh, will make you feel impressed and, and, and so forth. But it cannot fake the one thing that the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas have, the demons, no matter what they do, cannot fake. That is, they cannot fake the samadhis of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. When you see the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, your heart feels very peaceful and very blissful. Hmm? That's what happens. When you see the demon, you may get excited. Oh, wow, she's so pretty. Oh, wow. And you have all these improper thoughts arising in you. When you see the Buddhas and Bodhisattva, all of a sudden, your heart feels so peaceful and you feel so happy inside. Okay? Uh, and that's something the demons cannot, cannot, cannot uh, fabricate to fool you. They can only fabricate the external the marks, you know, the, the good looks, the splendor, the lights, and so forth. But only Buddhas and Bodhisattvas can give you the peace of mind and the calm and this inner happiness that you experience when you're near them. Okay? That cannot be faked. That's what happened in the Chan school. You meet that the, the, the Chan, the Chan is easy. Uh, easier to teach because the samadhi powers, the samadhi levels cannot be fake. Yeah, you go near a Chan, a Chan teacher, like Master Shenhua, it's a different experience. As next to, for example, a four-stage Ahat, it's, uh, it's like night and day. Okay? Or, you know, you still have this peace, inner peace, when you see Master Shenhua. You pay attention. You say, this is inner peace that you didn't have before until you take a look at him or you're near him. Okay? Why is that? Well, because I, I saw him. Uh, in, in, back then, I couldn't, I couldn't verbalize this. Back then, I saw him and said, wow, you're something else. And I saw his... Disciples, his famous disciples, seeing a disciple, he said, wow, you're something else. But there is, there is a difference. Now I can, I, can, I can point out the difference. Okay? Before, I couldn't tell the difference. But you can tell there's a difference. Okay? You're talking about high-level bodhisattva and... Anyway. <laughs> uh, and the difference is because Master Shenhua, when he looks at you, contrary to his disciples, he's totally unimpressed by you. He's not trying to get anything out of you. He sees nothing. Whereas a low level, his disciples are still impressed by you, are still seeing you as a donor or a, uh, 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 someone they need to save. Okay? My children says, nothing. And that's where your peace, inner peace comes from. He's seeking nothing at all from you. Zilch. Because when you see someone, and let's say, and put in simple terms, let's say like your uh, girl looking at a handsome man, you say, wow, handsome, you know, good prospects for husband. How much money do you have? <laughs> that kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about, girls? No, you don't. 
Okay, <laughs> never mind. I'm not a, a, a girl, so uh, I can't speak from the man's side because I forgot how it's like. <laughs> okay, but you get, you get my drift because we get excited because we cannot see through the appearance, through the marks. We cannot put it down. And that's why that is disturbance to you, to your inner peace. Whereas you are agitated already and you, you sit, you, you meet with Master Shenhua, he's totally unagitated. And that's why you calm down, you feel more peaceful right away. Does it make sense? Uh, so that's what, what happens. Um, the demons or the non-demons cannot, cannot fake it. They can, they can pretend to walk like a, a king, look so adorned, look so peaceful, magnanimous. But inside, they look at you and say, Mmm, donor, donor, donor. You know? <laughs> and because of that, it's not the same experience with you. The Buddhists and Bodhisattvas, at least the good ones, the good Bodhisattvas, they have absolutely uh, no interest in getting anything from you at all. All right? And, and that's the difference. When I look at you, I, I see, can we get a red car soon? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you never find peace. Okay. Uh, anyway, going back to the question earlier, do we go to the pure line and get a four-stage arhat? Uh, I feel that um, this is from Gautama Buddha himself. He says, in the Dharma ending Asia we are, the best bet for you is still the pure land. Okay. Uh, you practice... Uh, if uh, you are a Buddhist, uh, then your best bet would still be the Pure Land. Let me explain. Hmm. The kind of Dharma we're teaching you is Mahayana Dharma. And uh, in order to practice it, okay, the one requirement, you only have one requirement, that's it. It's called faith. It's the only way that you uh, have to enter Mahayana. So what happened is that the Pure Land Dharma door is one such example. Okay, which is uh, which is more demanding than Chan Dharma door. The Chan Dhamma door, you go and you learn meditation from us. We teach you how to cross your legs and how to do the things. And my students, I'm very, I'm very proud of the fact that my students are so uh, skilled at doing that. In fact, can we share the, the thing from a recent comment that I got from someone from Uganda, for all the places of the world? Uganda! I don't even know where it is. Uganda, okay, who says, I'm from Uganda, I discovered by, by chance this video uh, you know, of a Chan meditation from a white monk. I said, that's not me. <laughs> and then he showed, guess who the white monk is? My white hope. <laughs> and where is it? Can we have a photo of that? Huh? He's so handsome, so impressive. <laughs> it's right here. Actually, he was right there. I was sitting right there, I think. So in the background, you see that big bell. $15,000 bell, by the way. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, so he says, I'm so impressed. 
I found a white monk teaching Chan. And yeah, I learned so much. He said, yeah, I learned so much. And um, thank you. Thank you for, for the Chan teaching. My point being that uh, you may not be bodhisattvas yet, uh, but you have the proper uh, Mahayana, Weiyang style of Chan training. Because uh, Master Xianjie has been with me for something like, how long Xianjie? Is he still there? Oh, he's working. Uh, uh, over 10 years. And, and uh, so over the 10 years, uh, he, uh, he, uh, he hurt, so he watched us how to train people and teach people in Chan. So they have this knowledge, they have the proper fundamentals, as you will, that, uh, that uh, is quite, to me, different from the Chinese Weiyang style over there, where that you know, woman comes from. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so you see, because of, of that knowledge, when, when, when uh, you, you folks come to, uh, to uh, receive training from, from my disciples, you will make progress. It's fairly easy nowadays because we have such a strong track record. Before, it would take a long time for you to make progress. But now, you know, people come and, and they make progress so quickly. You know, I look at you, I look at the newcomers, and my God, how come, you know, you know how long it took me? You know, in a span of, of, uh, of uh, uh, not long at all, you surpassed me. You know, I was four and a half years at my master's Chinese uh, temples, and uh, my level is lower than you. <laughs> it's pitiful. Four and a half years of my life. And my level is lower than yours. I'm professional. Okay. I became a professional to learn how to do Chan. And after four and a half years, my level is lower than you. Lower than you. Okay. So, so it's no coincidence that this man from Uganda, okay, he says, it helped me. The instruction he gave me, yes, we talk, 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 but the instruction helped me and I see results. And that's why Chan school is easier to teach you and the core of our training uh, uh, efforts, uh, programs, is because when you do Chan, it's fairly easy for you to see the improvements. Another example. Can we have this photo from, from Korea? Oh, yeah, let's see how handsome he is. And how white he is. <laughs> Look at that. He says, whoa. I don't know, not sure what he's talking. Oh, really? Look at that. Oh, really? <laughs> Or, uh, did we have, can we have this photo here? Uh, uh, it's a, uh, hey, hey you, come. Uh, okay, I don't know how to plug this into thing. I'm so technically unsavvy because I have so many of you who are so good at it. I don't need to learn. Okay, blow it up. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the point being that uh, initially, Chan is very useful in order for you to see, yes, you're making progress, and yes, you are uh, improving and you're becoming more important, most important to us, a better person, a better husband, a better uh, mother, a better brother. That's important to us, a better son. That's very important to us. Okay? Uh, uh, nothing can be a substitute for that. Okay. So, uh, because, it's, because the improvements are inside first. Then it manifests outside. 
That's our training. We don't teach you uh, to walk in a adorned way or talk in a certain way to impress people. We, we teach you how to change your innards, you know, your, your, your guts, your core, if you will. It's core training, okay? Look at that. Now, oh really, Chan meditation. And after 10 years, he's still skinny like hell. No matter what I do. And people are thinking we're starving these white people. <laughs> Got it? Master, can we have some questions from uh, Jumaun Temple? Well, we don't care. Let me <laughs> can, can we show those blow yeah, that, yeah, uh, photos? She's okay. 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 okay, Jumaun Temple. Oh, so many so, questions. It, it's almost, time there, is almost up. There are four questions. The first one is, when a person leaves home life, is it sad? It is sad that nine generations of family will ascend. Does the mon monk or nun have to get enlightened in order to have the nine generation of family ascend no. to the heaven? Or it's automatic? No. Don't have to be enlightened. Otherwise, no one will lead the home life. <laughs> so the, the next question is, if the left home person returns to the home life, so the ancestors in the heavens must come down again or not? Uh, uh, it depends on who, who that person who returns to lay life, what does she do? <laughs> okay, what else? Uh, the next one, is this including all family members like my parents or in, and in-laws? Uh, 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 no, your parents, ancestors only, not, not in-laws. So if uh, the person had divorced, does that include your ex-husband's family? Uh, who cares about your ex-husband? <laughs> if he's stupid enough to divorce you, <laughs> uh, he deserves nothing good. <laughs> That's all, Master. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so it's, it's like here, August, this lady came. Look at how adorned she is. Look at that. Cool, huh? And November, three months later, look at that. You see the difference? Yeah. Hmm? What's the difference? This is what I'm very pleased with. Skinnier? <laughs> Skinnier. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> the difference is that there's kindness in her eyes, more kindness in her eyes. It's from here. The heart is kinder. The samadhi is higher and manifests through the kindness, the increased kindness in the heart. Just because you, your samadhi level increases, many people will become more arrogant. Okay? And say, who are you? Hmm. But uh, the transformation here, and I, like to, I really like to see this, uh, uh, is that People become kinder. And that the small ways we're contributing to society. The world is suffering enough. Others are struggling so much. We don't need to add more to their suffering. The kindness goes a long way towards helping others around you. So you come to the temple, you practice, you receive training, you bring it home to your family. That's very important to us. Or in the case of Ronald, who has no family, 
He, he brings it over to the Chinese restaurants he goes to. Okay? In very small ways, in very humble ways. We, that's how we contribute to the community through you. Okay? Hmm. Anyway, uh, so uh, the one requirement that you will have in order to practice Mahayana is faith. Because uh, in Mahayana, there's no way to explain everything to you. you. Mahayana does not make sense to you. It's only through faith that you can learn Mahayana. Uh, so, so initially, you need to teach you meditation, Chan meditation, okay? And you see the results. You see, you know, you see your samadhi increase and so forth. And then, and then you see the wonders of the instructions. Not only the samadhi increases, but we give you Dharma talks so that you have the proper perspective, okay? Uh, uh, from, from your experiences. And this is a result. You see this? That's a result. This is a very proper person. Hmm? Hmm. Very decent person, but who became kinder. It tickles me to death. It tickled me pink when I see this. Okay? So you see this progression, okay? You feel more peaceful, uh, more blissful naturally in your progression in a Chan meditation. Okay? Uh, however, uh, if you want to reach uh, much higher, in particular beyond fourth stage and beyond, okay, uh, he had to switch gear. That's why Gautama Buddha had to start teaching you, okay, gradually. And we don't have that kind of time. The Buddha has 50 years and he has all the kind of support he has for us. We have the, the history behind us, the Buddhism history. So we only appeal to you initially with the Chan school, but eventually the main thing in Chan is not so much about samadhi power because it's going to happen naturally. Because these people know, you know yourself. But in that process, faith becomes stronger. And that's when you can go into Peel and Dharma door. Because then you realize that uh, Peel and is, is, uh, uh, is, a, is a much more useful Dharma door for you uh, to help your family, to help yourselves, and to help your future. Okay? So that's why at this point here, uh, that we've been together um, for many years, for over 10 years. Um, I'll tell you that's the purpose. The purpose is eventually, I hope that you all go to the pillar, okay? And bring your families, bring your, uh, uh, and your acquaintances, your friends, the people you care for, to the pillar with you, okay? Uh, and that requires faith. Pillar requires faith. So if you have faith, then for you to get four stage jahat is not that difficult, in my opinion. The Hinayana, Gautama Buddha had to go slow with them. Hmm. But he tried to teach them certain teachings and so forth, and that's manifest in the uh, Hinayana teaching, but they don't realize it, uh, certain teaching themselves. Okay? But, um, uh, but he, he eventually, uh, if you're, uh, to me, uh, the uh, Pure Land Dharma door uh, can be... Uh, can be uh, very, very powerful in your practice, even uh, will help you get the four stage jaha uh, very quickly too. Okay, so the answer is, number one, go for the pure land. Don't settle for anything less. 
Number two, okay, uh, now that we're here together, let me tell you why we're doing this. Uh, we're doing this in order to help you go to the Pure Land. Do not mess around. Uh, the Chinese, the Asians said, I recite the Buddha's name, I will go to the Pure Land. I'm telling you, you recite the Buddha's name, you practice in order to go to the Pure Land. Now, this lifetime, stop fooling around. Okay? Uh, that's the first. And uh, number two is that when you go to the Pure Land, I want you to go with a good grade. Okay? Uh, go there with, uh, you know, and be among the, you know, the, uh, the elite. Don't go there and say, I'm from Wei Mountain Temple, Lu Mountain Temple. I'm a disciple of Master Yung Hua. And uh, where do you go? You go to uh, uh, roast meat in a pure land. That'd be horrible. I'd like you to go to Beverly Hills. Okay? The Beverly Hills of the Pure Land. Don't go to roast meat in the Pure Land. Jeez, you're too embarrassing. Okay? Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Where are we? Okay. So, um, going back to reality, uh, uh, let's uh, look at uh, these, uh, let's try to, to look into the great transference Dharma door here that uh, we uh, started practicing. Is this second year, right? Second, second year in a row we started doing this. Uh, when you learn Mahayana, in Mahayana, uh, if you want to learn Mahayana, uh, you learn from the patriarchs, period. Hmm? Your best bet is to learn from a Mahayana patriarchs, period. Okay? Masha Shenhua is one. And uh, personally, I just don't want to learn from just any patriarch. I want to learn from uh, someone called Great Patriarch. Okay? Patriarchs are not all the same. My interest is to learn from the Great Patriarchs. The Great Patriarchs, turns out, those Great Patriarchs, or Chinese or Indian. So we have to go back to the source. They have the teachings in their own languages. Okay. Uh, so uh, they're in China, uh, in a Pure Land school, there are some Chinese great Chinese patriarchs. Okay. And uh, hopefully, maybe in the future, we can look into their stories and their teachings and so forth. Would be so cool. Uh, and now you, I have a lot more of you to help me do research on in in the Chinese text sources, and I will try to translate them for you. Okay, uh, it would be a nice our nice uh, little contribution to the wisdom, uh, pure language wisdom in Western language. Is that ideal? Okay, find me those, uh, uh, you know, like a Lizu that has 14, 13 patriarchs. Okay, go through them and uh, try to look up their teachings. Okay, and then we'll, we'll, we'll discuss them in the future. Is that, is, that, is that reasonable? Would you be interested? Uh, anyway, um, so uh, there is a second patriarch called Great Master Shantao. Okay. He's the second. The first Pure Land Patriarch was Venerable Hui Yin. Okay? He founded the Pure Land School in China. And then the second Patriarch was a Great Master Shantao. 
okay who who gave us his uh, his uh, his uh, precious this invaluable teaching okay and, and i i wish i read this a little bit uh, sooner uh, when i started teaching pila because this is incredible this is incredible wonderful pila teaching that i don't know why the chinese don't translate more of this and talk more like this okay uh, because um maybe because people wouldn't understand hmm. we don't care we say whatever is important and you pick up whatever you can pick up okay uh, the master shantao when he says when you practice pilan uh he says at sleep time okay ji sui shi ying fa zu yan at sleep time you should make uh vows you make this vow okay yeah. whether you you make this vow you make this vow while you're sitting while you're standing okay doesn't matter but before you sleep you make this vow and when i learned pulan from my master's uh, environment no one ever taught us this okay so it's sort of lost uh, or never understood so you you when you make this vow okay uh, he, he says he, uh, he, uh, he says whether you're standing or you're sitting you put your palms together and you become single minded meaning you focus right you focus don't be scattered okay you may be scared all day you may be tired but when you about to go to sleep even after a long day's work you tired and you need to get some rest okay uh, it's interesting that this patriarch says before you sleep it's okay it doesn't matter where you are who you are okay. short chinese or tall american tall white guy okay um, you sit or you stand and you put your palms together and you concentrate you focus you face the west and you recite 10 times amitabha okay no only amitabha you also recite one jiz din you also recite great strength and you also recite the pure great assembly of bodhisattvas so whether it's english chinese or whatever sanskrit doesn't matter that's what he says so far so good he's only taught the, the asians are only taught to recite the buddha's name 10 times this patriarch says the second patriarch says and you know later can we can i share a secret before because time is running out the second patriarch actually is i mean hey <laughs> chinese person bad bad chinese person <laughs> it's amitabha buddha would you like to to listen to receive any power's instruction is that a some chinese monk from china short chinese monk from china <laughs> think about it right yeah so amitabha says don't just recite amitabha's name recite one yin recite great strength 10 times one yin 10 times great strength 10 times and then pure assembly of bodhisattvas ten times concentrate i need to go to amitabha go to amitabha go to okay yeah. and then one thing but one minute one minute so just 10 times and then great thing what is what what is going on is going okay and then great family what is what great family great peer family what is great uh, great peer family great family, great family. 10 times can you do that billy 
<laughs> How come never, no one ever taught me? Because I didn't know. <laughs> then, you make a vow. Uh, and, and this is the text that you recite during the great transference that we do a little bit later. That's the text. That's from this patriarch. So far, so good? Hmm? That's what we should all be doing. Hmm? Hmm. And so he says, uh, 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 we can go back to this and so forth, but this is a text that we will have after Yusuke Ambalate. This is the text, this text, that's from Ani Tabas. Before? Okay, before, excuse me. She's an expert. Uh, I'm not, okay? Uh, so you recite this, okay? Uh, and, and it says, single mindedly reciting his name with secret birthday is land. He hoped that he remembers so we will out kindness gather us in. So he says, uh, 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 please help us. All the Buddhas, please help us. Hmm? Hmm. I know the Chinese would like to tell you, call Master Shen Hua for help and so forth. I will tell you, call the, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to help you. Okay? Uh, um, and then, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, you, you, uh, uh, and you have failed to recognize his body, who marks his life, and will manifest, I see one, you correct all the bodhisattvas. This is what you will see. When your faith is enough, you will see this. Hmm? It's not samadhi, it's faith. If your faith is deep enough, you're able to see this. So far, so good? Hmm. And uh, Dorn Pure Land and so forth, you see all these bodhisattvas and the great assembly of bodhisattvas and Buddhas appear in front of you and so forth. Okay? Uh, and so you, you, you recite this, you make this vow, right? You make this vow, okay? It's a, it's a very good thing, if possible. Uh, those of you who have a good memory, you should memorize it, all right? And then, and then uh, after you make that, okay, you make all those vows, okay, and now you recite uh, and enter contemplation, and, and then you rest. Okay? Uh, and um, the... Uh, Mm. And the master says in slide number 10 that uh, when you keep on doing this every night, make it a habit, make it a practice, do it every night. It doesn't take long to do this. Very, very fast. And, and uh, when you do that, sometimes you will see all these manifestations. Or even during your sleep, you see these manifestations. But it will happen. It's from your faith. From your resolve, you will see this. And you will attain rebirth. You will be able to ensure your rebirth, attain what is desired, meaning ensure your rebirth of the pure land. Hmm. Okay? Hmm. Now, you know, those of you who, who, uh, who do this a while and, and you, you like to recite the Buddha's name, practice the Buddha's name, and, uh, uh, okay, then uh, uh, this is how Master Shantao says, before sleeping, okay, whether you sleep here in Buddha Hall, some of you are sleeping in Buddha Hall, uh, 
he contemplate the Western Pure Land. Uh, okay, uh, you have all all these drawings that he drew. Actually, Shantao, Master Shantao, drew a lot of scenery from the Pure Land. Okay, um, uh, and that's available through uh, the Chinese uh, sources. You know, they're like. Uh, uh, Buddhist education network. They have all these drawings, all these things. And you could just bring home some, some home and put it on a, on on a frame, and then you can look at it yourself. Or if you are not into that, you're lazy, and uh, those of you who cannot drive, you can simply uh, go through the uh, the memorize the the the, the uh, Buddha praise. Uh, the, the Buddha praise that we do every day, okay? The Buddha's hallmarks, uh, the uh, golden body, body, collar, and so forth, before we circumambulate the Buddha's name uh, and recite the Buddha's name, you, should, you go, through, go through, through that and contemplate that, okay? Uh, uh, and Master Shantao says, uh, uh, you should not uh, entertain uh, thoughts or speak. Okay, don't talk to people. Uh, don't uh, be scattered. In particular, do not seek visions. You will see auspicious visions, but don't seek it. It will come naturally. Okay, and you become single-minded. Okay, when you see those things happen, don't get excited. That's what he says. It will happen naturally. Hmm? Many of you have experienced it already. It happened naturally. Don't get excited. It just it will happen naturally. Okay? Is that clear? Yes. Sẽ cái kinh nghiệm là trong cái fasting năm rồi đó thì con đọc cái cái đại hướng này nè. Mà mình có, mình đọc hết cái lòng chân thành như mình nói với Đức Phật đó. Giống như con nói chuyện với Thầy vậy đó. Cái, tỏ cái lòng chân thành mình tỏ ra, mình nói thì con đọc thầm thôi. Thì con có hỏi là sao mà thân thính Pháp âm khả liễu liễu. Thì mai mốt con giảng sanh mới gặp Phật con đứng đó, mai mới liễu liễu. Mà Phật thần thông vĩ đại, tại sao không cho con liễu liễu ngay bây giờ đi. Để con có cái trí tuệ con dạy người ta. Con còn không sao không bao lâu nữa. Thì mỗi ngày con đọc cái lời nguyện Đại Hồ Hướng này nè Thì ngày thứ 17 đó Con đứng lên không nổi nữa Con đeo cái bàn con đứng lên cho để đi tiểu Chứ đứng không nổi nữa Thì nghe cái người lạ lắm Thì chạy là mở cái hộp sơn mài Đựng xá lợi thì nó sinh ra một ngôi vàng rồng ừ. Gần mang hộp tiêu lắm ừ. Cũng đọc cái bài này nè ừ. Mỗi ngày con đọc thuộc lòng như vậy White, yellow, whatever. I would like to share my experience last year when I was doing fasting. Um, on the seventh, uh, 17th day, I was so tired, but every day I was reading the text of the Great Transference here. And there is a part saying that uh, uh, the Buddha's the light and hallmarks and characteristics are so wonderful. And then I suddenly have a thought, why do we have to wait until we die in order to see Amitabha? Why, why not now when I'm still alive? Because, um, because I have that thought and then soon after that, I have a feeling that my Sharira is, is um, up here. So, so I, I just happened to see there is one golden sharira appear on the table. And it's kind of like um, an, a confirmation for whatever I, I was wondering, ponder upon. In our temples, many shariras will appear of different colors. When you have a gold sharia, yellow sharia appear, okay, 
that's a pure land response. Which is pretty good. Okay. Golden share is even better. Probably worth a lot of money. Yes, black back there. Mô Phật Bạch Thầy nói về niệm Phật đi được đi giảng sanh con nghĩ rất là khó bởi vì chúng sanh niệm một đường làm một nẻo cái này là mình có một cái linh tính đó. hồi đó ngày xưa con cũng niệm Phật hoài vậy đó niệm Phật niệm một đường làm một nẻo rồi ngày qua thượng tiên quá thấy chúng sanh khổ quá chừng thôi con đi không có nổi đâu tới lớn tuổi rồi, ai nào già lẫn hết rồi giống quả ngăn bây giờ nè niệm một niệm một ngày nghỉ ba ngày có khi không có niệm luôn có thấy không <cười> bây giờ bây giờ đó ngày hòa thượng tiên quá mới có một cái bài vị để đi giảng sanh là cái đó là chắc ăn nhất thôi đó ai biết đi trồng được cái phước đó thì người đó có thể giảng sanh cái này hòa thượng tiên quá nói chứ không phải quả ngăn nói <cười> Mô Phật đó. Yeah. Bởi vì đó, chúng sanh đó, chứ tới ta bà này đó, nói kỳ niệm Phật ai nào cũng nghe cũng muốn làm hết đó. Mm. Niệm một đường làm một nẻo Thầy. Mm. <cười> bởi mm. vì ngày, bây giờ mình tin Ngài Hòa Thượng Tiên Hóa, một cái một cái kim khẩu mà để khai thị cho chúng sanh mà ai nghe thì làm không làm thì thôi, chứ cái đó là cũng phải tùy. Bởi yeah. vì làm có một cái bài vị đi giảng sanh là cái đó là chắc ăn nhất. Mình mua được cái giấy máy bay rồi thế nào mình cũng được đi à? in in my opinion uh, I notice that a lot of people are good at talking but then they are doing different thing so my uh, I myself recite the Buddha's name used to recite Buddha's name a lot but then my mouth is recite that way but my body is doing something else so Um, it's very, very difficult to recite the Buddha's name and go to the Pure Land. And I think like Master Xunhua has a system of the black system. I think that is will be the best way to get it and obtain rebirth to the Pure Land. Very good. Knowledge that this woman is on some kind of mission. I'm, I got my gut feeling. This year she's so talkative. Every year before she will come and say, What do you know? Are you for real? <laughs> Now he says, I, I think she's up to something. I'm not sure what. But uh, uh, this morning I got a call from, uh, from New York. Uh, one of her acquaintances. She's up to something as usual through that New York connection. <laughs> uh, it cost me time out of my schedule. Anyway. Uh, you're up to something. I know you're up to something. Dạ, không ở thế gian này cũng không còn bao lâu. Và thượng tiên quá nói đó, nên là cô nói tất cả trong bên này nói mà cái ai mà làm đệ tử của ngài hòa thượng tiên quá đó phải dám ăn dám nói và hòa thượng mới nhận làm đệ tử mà cứ giấu giấu hoài mai mốt chắc hòa thượng tiên quá không có nhịn đâu. Yeah. Sean, you uh, you get me uh, a uh, photo of the Buddha, something like that, Amitabha Buddha. Bring it home, frame it, have her watch it, or get a photo of the scenery from I need the Pure Land that we have a Blue Mountain Temple. You know what I'm talking about, girls? Huh? That scenery of the Buddhas and and and, and multitudes of bodhisattvas and attendants and so forth. Bring it home and have her, you know, look at it. Okay, I want her to look at it. Okay, that's her next level. Okay, she has a faith already. Uh, what I want to tell you today, I want to stress for you today, is this, it's so fascinating that it came from uh, the second patriarch of the Pure Land. You see, uh, he says, you say all those things, and then what do you do? You become, you contemplate and you recite the Buddha's name. You recite all those things, like those vows, right? You need to make vows. 
Remember, make vows, say be nice. Make vows, make vows, make vows. Yeah. Okay. Uh, same thing with that woman here. You know, I want you to go home and have, a, you know, like a Wan Yin, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe a statue of the Buddha if, if you don't have space. Uh, okay. Have a statue Amitabha Buddha. Okay. And recite the Buddhism looking at that. Okay. And, and uh, uh, what's, what makes the Pure Land Dharma door different from the Chan Dharma door is this. Because I've been teaching you recite the Buddha's name based on a Chan Dharma door, I admit to you. Okay? I'm a Chan person, <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> I love Chan, and I'm sharing you my love. Okay? Uh, but the Pure Land School is what, is what Master Shan Tao is teaching you. He said, recite the Buddha's name. Okay? And all of you can do this. Okay? You can recite it standing. You can recite it uh, sitting in a chair or not in full lotus, whatever. But, you know, if possible, recite in full lotus. Okay? And you contemplate. It's the key word. You contemplate the scenery in your mind. Okay? You don't know what it is? Look at the photos, the drawings. Or look at the drawing of Amitabha Buddha. Okay? Or recite through your name. You know, Amitabha's body is of golden color. Okay? You recite that. And that's a contemplation right there. You see that? Three ways. So far so good? You do that. And that's why reciting a Buddha's name. That's a combination of both Chan and faith. If you sit in full lotus, it's even better. That's Chan and Pure Land in parallel. But if you cannot sit in full lotus, like Ron who's still working on it, okay? I hope he's listening. Then recite in half lotus and contemplate. Hmm? Look at the photo, look at the picture. That's what the second picture is teaching us, how to recite the Buddha's name. Hmm, everyone is so interested. Huh? Can we do it tonight? Try it tonight? Huh? Deal? Huh? That's how they sign the Buddha's name. Isn't that cool? Questions, comments? Okay, and we can go through this a little bit later. Okay, but that's what I want to share with you. I'm so excited because I read this as, wow, why didn't the Chinese teach me earlier? I thought my master would, uh, would teach them, but, but... So the way you recite the Buddha's name by reciting and contemplating. Questions? Comments? Yes. Yes, fireworks from Northern California. It says that uh, to not mix the dramas, does that mean that uh, we should not recite N? No, okay. no, no. It means that mix here is the Chinese and uh, from the old Chinese because it must Shan Tao was uh, instructions a long, long time ago. Uh, I mean, mix here means that do not be scattered. Okay? When you do something, do single-mindedly. Don't... Uh, don't uh, uh, mixing this, mixing that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? And when you do that, and you are sincere enough, the Buddha, and this is my conjecture, 
So please, if it doesn't happen, don't blame me. <laughs> okay. But I tell you why he's doing and telling you to do this. He tells you to do this to contemplate because when you do it long enough, you stop thinking, you will see those things. Because of your faith. So, reciting Buddha's name is actually a contemplation. It's not simply, oh, beautiful, beautiful, like uh, the Asians are learning nowadays. Okay? So far, so good? Hmm. That's why, uh, now going back to finally to the comment where he says you, you, you want to recite and go for rebirth and people recite Buddha's name hoping for rebirth. Here's what happens. Here's, 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 uh, here's, um, here's why I'm so excited about this and I am glad we have the chance to share it with you tonight. Uh, I was thinking that maybe enough time. Oh, there's a question from San Jose. They don't want to know what I, I want to share with you. Oh, go, go ahead, San Jose. Uh, sorry, uh, I was a little bit misunderstanding. So I was talking about the next slide where, uh, where uh, Master Shanda says, uh, choose one Dharma. What uh, slide number is that? Uh, yeah, this one. 13? Okay. Okay, what about it? Uh, does that mean that uh, we either recite the Buddha's name or contemplate the mark, the hallmarks? Yeah, just one. do one. For example, recite the Buddha's name or recite Wan Yin's name if that's what you want. Or Great Strength's name if that's, what you have, you know, that's who you have affinity with. But choose one name, okay? Uh, and just do only one. Okay? Uh, the best thing is to uh, recite uh, Amitabha's name for most of you. So far, so good? Okay. Uh, can we, uh, is, can we uh, recite silently? Yes. You can recite silently. You can recite uh, with your beautiful voice. Or you can recite uh, uh, whatever. Okay. It doesn't matter how. You just do it. Okay. So recite. Sorry. Um, Reciting and uh, contemplate, uh, yes. visualize it. It's yes. happens. Yes. Okay. That's how the patriarchs wants you to mm -hmm. recite the Buddha's name. Okay? Uh, I feel it's better in the way I taught. I've been teaching you the last uh, 10 years. Okay? Uh, and, and I begin to see why. It's much more effective than the way I teach you. The way I teach you is Chan. When you do that, you also will enter Samadhi. But this will be, I believe, it's faster. Okay? More effective for many of you. And now, here's, here's what happens in the Pure Land Dharma door that's totally different from the Chan Dhamma door. When I teach you Chan, you know, and the last uh, 15 years, uh, it's uh, uh, hard work because, um, because I chose to do it that way. But the way that um, uh, Venerable Shantao teaches you to do, which is far better than that, because my way is, uh, is uh, more difficult because uh, uh, we need to get rid of the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, not serious people. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but his is a truer Pure Land Dharma door, a truer Pure Land practice, if you will. Please, please... Uh, uh, be patient with me. Let me explain to you. Okay. This Dhamma door, when I read it, I said immediately, I said, yeah, that's the Pure Land Dhamma door. 
what I taught, been teaching you, is Chan Dharma Door. Chan dominant. This is pure land dominant. Okay, that's the difference. So those you who 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 are uh, more interested in Chan, uh, it's it's uh, uh, you 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 like it. Okay, uh, uh, and uh, that's how we keep the the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, 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 the bicycle people away. Okay. <laughs> bicycle people who says, I need to recite Buddhism walking a certain way. Nah, more. <laughs> that kind of nonsense. Uh, anyway, so that's nonsense. Okay, total nonsense. You ask me. Or in Chan school, you have some people who advocate hugging trees. You can hug all the trees you want, and then I tell you, you cross your legs in full lotus, you run away very quickly, okay? Because you've been hugging trees. Okay. So we go through this perching process where you screen people out, okay? So, but if you practice Chan, it's different from the Pure Land, the way that Master Shan Dao teaches you. The difference is that in Chan, we submit you to much harsher requirements. In the Pure Land here, the way he teaches you, you're receiving help from your practice. Because when you recite the Buddha's name, first of all, what do you do? You make vows, right? So what does it do? Faith, right? You make a vow because you believe, right, Sean? It's the only way you're going to keep on making vow night after night is that you believe. So every time you make a vow, it reinforces, increases your faith. Agree? This is pure land. This is pure, pure land. What I've been teaching you is Chan pure land. <laughs> so I'm so excited. Okay. So cool. I'm learning something new. <laughs> so, so you make a vow, increase your faith every night. Your faith increases, increases, increases. Hmm? Okay? Vietnamese. Chỉ có học thuộc lòng cái cái bài 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 kệ đó, đâu có nhiêu đâu, học thuộc lòng. Okay, uh, and so you make a vow, you make a vow every night, so it increases your faith. Okay, and then and then you recite the Buddha's name. That's chant. Yes, that's chant. However, when you recite the Buddha's name. And you contemplate his, you do the contemplation, whether it's a pure land scenery or himself, then you're receiving help from the pure land sages that you don't otherwise when you practice meditation. Understand the difference? Meditation, you endure the pain, you endure the pain, you endure the pain, and so forth, okay? In the Pure Land School here, you do the contemplation in order and you recite the Buddha's name, you are receiving help from these Pure Land sages. Amitabha Buddha, Wanyin Bodhisattva, Great Strength Bodhisattva, the Great Assembly of Bodhisattvas. They're there to support you, to protect you, to be mindful of you, to aid you. And that's the nature of the Pure Land practice, because all this help, you're getting help from them. That's Pure Land. Questions? Yeah. White. Yellow. Uh, I just would like to share a comment. I found out maybe last year my mom told me my grandmother who was 
you lived it her whole life and suffered her whole life. But apparently she was saying Amitabha, reciting Amitabha every night or so, like with, see, outside the house with the sky. When she passed away, we did the 49 days and then the, with the Taoist. And then so at the end, the, Dao, the, the, the Taoist person would do like a measure of where uh, she went, and it came out apparently super high. The Taoist guy was so shocked, and she, he asked, was, was this an, a monastic, or she belonged to some kind of special refugee or something? And my, my, my parents were like, no. So I guess that was some result. I don't know where she went, but. It sounds too commercial for me. Don't believe everything. Did it cost you anything? Anyway, the, the, point, the point being, if you, those of you who do not uh, want to memorize or whatever, okay, then look at the statue, look at the image. That's good enough. And you make a vow, say, I like, I'm, I vow to be reborn to, this, to the pure land. This lifetime, please help me, please help me, please help me. That's what you do. Is that clear? Keep it very simple, okay? And then you contemplate, okay? You look at that, you look at the image, you look, okay? That's what you do, and you recite Buddha's name. It's, and soon your guy eyes get tired, you close your eyes, and then you can see in your eyes, eventually, the image. All right, sounds good? That's pure, pure land practice. Isn't that cool? Is that that simple? Black. Mẹ con qua đời á, thì giống gia đình ngồi có hai phe, mà ngồi tại phe bên ông thầy đây, rồi mấy chị em tôi thì có một cái phe bên kia, thì bên kia thì nó làm một cái một cái uh, gì nó làm lớn lắm uh -huh. mời nhiều nhiều tám vị tăng lần uh -huh. mà tám vị tăng thì cũng cao hạ lắm mà chứ không phải là ấy uh -huh. thì niệm rồi làm xong rồi đó thì uh, mà con cũng không có hỏi nữa thì uh, mấy mấy vị tăng mới nói ô oh, làm cái công đức lớn quá cho mẹ gì thôi chứ không có nói mẹ đi giảng sanh uh -huh. thầy thầy mới nói mẹ con đi giảng sanh Ừ. Thì hai bên thì Bên kia thì làm cái công đức thôi Chứ không có nghe nói là à, Bây giờ mẹ con đi giảng sanh Thì Con mới hỏi thầy Thầy mới nói là mẹ con đi giảng sanh ba tầng sau Thứ ba tầng đi bốn tầng nữa Thì nó mẹ con đi giảng sanh Thì con nghe quá mừng đi Thì mấy anh em ngõ cũng đông đã cũng Không có đông đâu Tại vì tụi nó không có thích Thì nó cũng không có tới nữa Cũng khoảng mười mấy người vậy đó Thì con nói là miệng mẹ con đi giảng sanh đó thì phải độ cho gia đình mấy chị em tôi đó gia đình biết người nào cũng biết tu hết thầy ừ. thầy nói là ờ có chứ thầy nói câu đó đó ừ. yeah. rồi ừ. thầy làm tới 49 ngày sau á thì tụi nó đó thầy cái vũ đi qua bên kia cái 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 đám bên kia thì mà mấy ông ông sư này là cũng người tà loan là cũng cao hạ lắm mà ừ. cũng mời cũng nhiều tiền lắm mà chứ không phải mình kêu người ta tới khơi khơi là ấy ừ. đâu ha ừ. thì tụi nó bàn tính cái bà chị cái sư cô kia nó rủ đi qua bên kia để quy y thì mấy ừ. người này nó nín hết không có ai trả lời hết trên ừ. à, thì thì tụi nó làm à, thôi bây giờ ấy thì đây thầy ở đây có quy y thì xuống dưới này quy y đi Thầy ừ. con nói nhẹ nhẹ gì đó, tụi nó xuống như này quỳ y với thầy đó. Ừ. Mua Phật. <cười> Rồi bây giờ tụi nó mới có mở tình, có mở không tình. Bây giờ ừ. mình đó, theo, con cũng có, có cái nguyện cũng rất là dài, dài lắm. Rồi con cũng theo đuổi tới giờ này đó, thầy tụi nó biết đi quỳ y đầu cửa ừ. Phật đó. Thầy con, tụi con, con cũng rất là mừng. Thì ừ. chồng được một cái nhân ở trong nhà Phật. Ừ. Chứ không thôi tụi nó không có tin cái cái vụ này đâu. Ừ. đi cúng thần ừ. đồ này kia đi cầu xin đồ này ừ. kia không à ừ. bây giờ cũng có mớ cũng thích đi cầu xin đồ này kia quả ngân thì không có xích ừ. yeah. mua phật
Um, Master, I would like to share my story. When my mom passed away, my family was uh, divided into two groups. One group wanted to ask uh, the high-ranking monk to do the funeral, but I was uh, preferred to ask Master to take care of her funeral. So, um, the, uh, so in the end, um, my my other siblings go with the other group, and then they invite eight Taiwanese monk high ranking, and then um, do a very big funeral. But then they didn't really mention anything about going to the Pure Land. They all they only praise that oh we did a good uh, funeral for our mom, and then we generate a lot a lot of blessing. Only Master mentioned that um, after three weeks. Master said, my mom make it to the Pure Land, and then I was so, so happy. And then I also um, have a vow that I want all of my brothers and sisters have a chance to cultivate. And I shared with Master, and Master said, okay, yeah, they will. So after the funeral, after 49 days, the nun from the other group persuade them to take refuge with the Taiwanese monk. But um, my siblings didn't respond. But um, I, I told them, I persuade them that uh, you should go and take refuge with Master. And in the end, a lot of them did take refuge with Master. And to me, that is a very good way to plant a good seed for them. Even though right now some of them are still like to believe in the externalist and seeking worldly things, but at least they already take refuge with Master, and I feel that um, it's a very good thing. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, the problem with the Pure Land. Uh, the Pure Land Dharma is that people, uh, people can't see. They don't know. So, so for example, and we heard of a case where the externalists took care of the 49-day service and then they did the, the ba gua or whatever and they did the reading and they said, this is very high. Uh, I'm sorry, it's nonsense. It's not such a thing. There's no way for them to see. It's not possible for the ba gua to see their non-Buddhist externalists to be able to reach that far. It's not possible. Okay? So it's nonsense. Uh, unfortunately, in my humble opinion. Uh, but uh, when you go to the Buddhists, they would not touch it. The monks who are senior monks, who are proper monks, would not, teach, would not touch it. Because, uh, yeah. so when you go to the, uh, the Buddhist monks and ask them for help to do your funeral service, please don't ask them. Did my mother go to the Pure Land? Because you put a lot of pressure on these monks to give you an answer. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I believe my master did not allow his monks to do the 49 day service. Because, you know, people come and, and offer a lot of money and offer a lot of, make a lot of offerings. In the end, they said, all I care about is did my mom go or not? And he said, oh, 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 oh. And you don't say anything intelligent, word will spread around very quickly. <laughs> because, um, we monks are not supposed to say things. For example, to say that, uh, to see that, to say that, uh, yes, your mom went to the pure land when you cannot see it, then uh, we're done. We cannot do that. Monks cannot do that. Absolutely not. That's a big no-no for us. So that's why, uh, I remember when, uh, when uh, uh, her brother uh, died and, and, uh, and uh, uh, I said, uh, yeah, he made it a real land. And uh, his uh, good friend, this uh, woman, Buddhist woman who was a disciple, uh, 
over there, uh, over at the Mashashewa side as well, uh, didn't believe me. So he said, who are you to say about these, talk about these things like casual way like this? So she went over to a senior monk over there and, and he says, uh, uh, I want to know, all I want to know, yeah, you know, I've been coming to your temple, all I want to know is, did he make it the Pure Land? Because that guy over there said he made it the Pure Land. Right? You remember that? Yeah. And what did that monk say? Move on from the past. Don't talk about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so my point is, please, don't go to a monk and ask, did my mom make it? Did my, my father make it? Because you put them in a very bad situation. Okay? They cannot say anything if they cannot see it. If they don't know, they cannot say anything. Absolutely not. So, if you go there and you ask them to do all those fancy services, Eventually, they have to say, for all the money you spend on my place, on me, I need to tell you something good happened. So I, let me do bu gua here and, 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 and give you a reading. Okay? That's how the externalists do that. But for the monks, we can't, we can't do that. The pure monk, the proper monks, the senior monks, Buddhist monks cannot do that. So it's a good thing. Those are very decent monks. They don't talk about it because we are supposed to only tell you things that we know, not things that we imagine or we wish were the case. And so when we ask, when you ask us, it's a lot of pressure on us. So her family is very decent. They didn't ask. It's a good thing. They spent a lot of, uh, they, they made a lot of offerings to that, that group I heard. I heard the numbers, whoa, I could buy a car with this. <laughs> so, so, but they're very decent. They didn't ask. That's very good. Do not ask monks about that, please. Okay? But it's bound to happen. You know, eventually you go and do funeral services. Eventually one of these days, People will come and say, you know, I really miss my mother, I miss my father, I miss my son. You know, all I want is to know he's okay. Can you tell me he's okay? And what do you say? Move on from the past, let's move on. <laughs> Don't worry about it anymore. But you can't say yes or no. And because of that, because of that, the Pure Land Dharma door is becoming so superstitious. People make these claims when they don't know what they're talking about. Went to a high place. What does it mean, high place? I tell you right now, there's no such thing as a high place that uh, 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 that woman went to. And that's the state of the Pure Land Dharma door right now because so much, so much superstition, they make these claims that are unsubstantiated. And it's destructive because it destroys your faith. Because when we con you, when we mislead you, okay, I may be, do, be, be, be able to do it temporarily for a while, but eventually we'll catch up. And that's how I destroy Pure Land Buddhism. That's how you will lose faith in Pure Land Buddhism. Because we misled you. We're supposed to help you, not mislead you. That's why my master is a pure teacher. He says, you don't touch these things. You see this? Otherwise, you will get in trouble.
All right. Uh, let's do the great transference. Thank you, everyone. Oh.